Hello, today we're going to be making some trance music in Reason 9. I, I apologize that I have not uploaded any videos to my channel for a couple years now. I have still been producing all this time and still work on trance. So I want to come back to making tutorials again, and I'm going to start from scratch here. I believe I've learned quite a bit since my last time, and with the addition of all the new reasons, uh, tools and rack extensions and everything else, uh, there's quite a few more things we can cover. And uh, in this whole tutorial, I want to cover some of the creative process as well as some of the sound design, mixing, and mastering process. So let's begin. Um, I'm going to make this a 138 BPM track, and we're going to start with a kick. So let's open up a combinator, do a line mixer 6-2. There we go. I'm going to use Kong because I like Kong's mini... Uh, samplers, plus it's going to work well for what we're doing here. So uh, let's also throw a read drum in here. This is just going to be an initial thing. We're going to drag the CV out right here up into the gate in. Put a note on every beat, get our four on the floor going. And in the drum module, we're going to open up an NN nano sampler. And we'll find a good sample to use from here. Um, basically, the sound of your kick is going to come down to a couple things, but one of the most important things is the samples you're using. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the uh, Hellion, Trance, and Progressive Essentials. You can get all three packs, I believe, for about 30 bucks on Beatport. It's a really good deal. Uh, you know, buying a good uh, quality sample pack really is going to overhaul your entire sound and production, so it's really important that you have good samples to begin with. What we want to do now is take a filter and put this on high pass, turn the resonance up just a tiny bit, probably to around 82. I'm going to grab my frequency here and bring it down a bit. I want this to uh, cut off at about 80 hertz right before we get any low sup because we want the punch in and we want some of that high end hit, but we don't want sub and I'll show you why in a second. So we got a good punch right here, and now comes the next important part of creating our kick, which is the sub. Now this is a trick I just learned recently, and this actually really, really helps get a really loud booming sub with some more punch onto your kick, and it's, it really gives what a lot of trance is missing, which is a hard rounded out kick with some mid punch into the lower mids. and where. As a lot of trance these days you'll hear it just sounds kind of like a, a, a staticky snap and you're not really getting that hard kick punch that you should be having so i'm going to uncheck enable uh, pattern selection here right click and copy pattern to track we're going to move this up to the kick combinator and then we'll delete this So we still have our kick. Um, what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to create an audio track. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to create a track for Kong 1. We're going to move that down and we'll collapse this down. Now we're going to open up our instruments and select an instance of Thor. And we'll also create a track for Thor. The track for Thor, we're going to uh, copy this four on the floor down here, but let's open this up and let's change our snap mode to 164th. Highlight all of these notes and drag them about two spaces forward. And go ahead and close that out. So now when we play it, we hear like this. So we're almost there, but not quite. So let's let this play. And what we're going to do in Thor is we're going to make this a sine wave. We're going to drop this down a bit. You know what? Let's open this back up and drag that out a bit. All right, so if we keep this actually at octave four, 
and we get a good stuff there. So let's take our attack all the way down on our amp envelope. Let's bring our decay down to about 650. Get rid of our sustain, put a little bit of release. In fact, let's mute our Kong there. So what we're gonna do next is go to our filter envelope, attack all the way down, decay to about 250, sustain to about the same uh, level, which is uh, about 48, and we'll leave our release alone. So now, whenever we drop our frequency, put some envelope on it, maybe bring our decay down a bit, or up. Kind of find that sweet spot that you're looking for that has that nice tail on the, on the sub there. If you hit your shaper, go to hard clip. Or soft clip if you want something a little more uh, gritty. And there you can hear we have a good, really good subtail. So what we need to do is we need to get an MCOS equalizer on here. We want to cut out the low end. So we drag that all the way down, put the Q all the way up, and drop that gain. So now we go back to our Kong. Let's also get an EQ on here. that up to about three quarters. We want to go to right where this is getting subby and drop that. All right, sounds like we're getting a little too much click on our uh, sub here, so Now, whenever we pair those two together, you get a pretty strong kick, but we're not quite finished yet. So now that we actually have this together, I'm not quite liking the uh, punch up into the high end. So I'm going to browse through some more kicks and settle on one that I do like. So uh, back in our nano sampler, we're going to pull down the decay a bit so we have more of a short punch. and. Let's play with the release on our sub a bit. There we go. Just to get it to a level that we like. So now, our final touch is to add some compression onto this. But before we do any kind of compression, I'll go ahead and uh, get this created. I'm going to shift click this so that it's created without any attachments. And then route the master out to it. That way it's fully compressed. It's not just a mix-in signal. So let's bypass this for now. Before we do any sort of uh, compression, I want to get the mix perfect. So we're going to start with this high end here. And then just bring in the sub until it's a good level. Don't forget to completely mono your kick. That'll come into play in your mix later. You know, adjust the frequency here a bit for the high pass. If you 
you adjust it too much, you can hear a notch in the kick where it kind of sounds like it's out of breath, lost all of its weight. So you want to make sure you're at the right crossover frequency. At the same time, you also don't want to uh, flood any frequencies. So we want to make sure that we want to make sure that we're cutting out frequencies where these cross over and the sub kick so that we could keep the punch of our other sample somewhere between 80 and 160 hertz right in the middle so now whenever we bring back our uh, sample we should have a pretty clean sounding but strong punchy kick so now to make this even better we're going to turn back on our uh, compressor we're going to set the ratio somewhere uh, to about uh, 16.9 or 16.8 to 1. We're going to bring up the threshold so that we only have about uh, 2 to 4 dB reductions in our meter up here. We're going to turn the attack up to about 75 milliseconds and bring the release down. Adjust our threshold and give a little bit of output gain since we're losing a couple dBs we want to regain a couple dBs and there we have it we have a nice strong kick now I wanted to do the kick first because this springs up uh, a little point of uh, just having cohesive sound to your entire track I feel that whenever you start with a kick and you build the rest of your track around your kick you're gonna have a consistent and um, pretty solid mix. So now that we have a kick, we can start working on getting some sort of melody. For me, I like to start with figuring out a chord progression. So in order to do that, I'm going to open another combinator, throw down a line 6-2 mixer, and I'm going to use the Megasaur Super Saw Synthesizer. This is an instrument that's, um, or a rack extension that's on the reason, or, I'm sorry, the propeller head shop for $30. And that's actually pretty cheap as far as a synth goes. And I'd say that, you know, it doesn't seem like much, but especially for trance and a super saw sound, this little thing is just absolutely killer. This makes some really awesome saws. <laughs> so I'm going to use a preset here. We're going to uh, do a little bit of customizing on this. I'm going to create an equalizer route this up through the equalizer so let's cut out some lows and some mids we're going to get this pad to an exact kind of sound we want we want it to be a um, we want to have some mids into a decaying high sound if you don't know what I mean by that I it's almost kind of like filtering it off so that we have a good strong presence in the lows to the mids and kind of tuned down high so that we're not overloading everything else that needs to be in the high space. If you're unfamiliar with the purpose of a pad in trance especially, um, aside from delivering awesome euphoric chords, uh, pads really glue all of your sounds and the rest of your song, like your kick and your uh, hats and everything else. It just really brings it together and kind of glues it together. So a good in pads, uh, a well mixed pad is very important. So we're going to cut out some sore spots to make sure we have a nice light airy feel, and then we're also going to cut out some highs. So that's pretty basic. Let's uh, throw an Audiomatic Retro Transformer on here. Uh, I might catch some flack for using this, but I absolutely love this tool. I use it all the time. I think it really adds a lot of character to uh, your instruments. And if you know how to use it properly and 
without using it too much, then you're going to get really nice sounds out of it. So let's toss a bright preset on there. So I'm actually liking the sound of this. It's sounding a little sinister. Um, in my Spectrum EQ window, I'm going to enable EQ and turn on a low pass filter and put that to about about uh, one kilohertz. And then, uh, on the flip side, I'm going to put on a high pass filter and put that up to about 326 hertz. And then I'm going to cut out some of the uh, mid-ranges with uh, one of the EQ knobs. Um, I'd say probably around 500 hertz with about an 8.25 dB reduction and a Q value of 2.5. I'm going to turn on my uh, low-filled bell, uh, bell and find that sore spot that I'm hearing. which is at about 560 hertz. Cut that down by about five and a half dBs. So I'm gonna bring this high pass down a bit because we're missing some of our lows. And maybe even bring it my uh, low pass filter on the spectrum window down. I brought that down to about 156 hertz and already it's sounding a little bit better. So next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to grab my high field uh, on my equalizer window, turn on the bell mode, bring it to about 1.5 kilohertz and turn that down a bit to I'd say maybe a 9 dB reduction. And I grabbed my last EQ knob in the Spectrum EQ window, put it at a Q value of about 2.07, did a 10 uh, dB reduction at 790 hertz. So we're left with that sound. And finally, on top of that, I'm going to toss an RV7000 reverb on it. I'm gonna turn this on to arena mode, bring the dry wet down, uh, boost a high EQ and some of the high field damp and the decay. We're gonna turn the size up this is kind of a preference thing. I, I know some of these mixers have this functionality built in, but I, I like to do my own. I'm going to create a utility, a Spider Audio Merger and Splitter, and I'm going to remove all the outputs from the RV7000, and we're going to take the output from the Audiomatic Retro, Trans uh, Retro Transformer, whatever it's called, and then we're going to take the audio input to our initial equalizer have our synth go right to that and then our splitter is going to put a dry signal into our mixer and then another signal into our reverb which will then go back out to our mixer this way i can adjust my wet dry values with just these two knobs here that with the levels i like this better i kind of feel like it gives me a little more control over my uh dry and reverb sounds and I, I don't know, I just think it sounds better, so that's just my personal preference. Oh, and let's not forget to route the master out to the combinator. I'm going to turn the dry wet all the way up on this. I actually might change the patch on here. 
Uh, let's try Megasaur. I'm going to turn the amp attack down on that. And we'll do the, uh, I'm sorry, the filter attack down and we'll do the amp attack up. Let's give it a little more release as well. I like that. And now the final trick to my pad, which is going to give you an absolute huge, huge, huge sounding pad, just completely wind it out, is I'm going to throw a utility on there. I'm sorry, an effect on there called the Quadrilectra Stereo Splitter. This is another rack extension you can find in the Reason Shop. It's $10. This has absolutely transformed all of my sounds. It, cre it will help you make anything just absolutely massive sounding, and it's one of the integral parts of my mastering chain. Definitely my favorite rack extension so far. Uh, on that same note, you got to be a little bit careful with it. I'm going to uh, recreate that with no attachments to it. So we're going to take this master out, put it directly in here, and then take the output up to here. So when I say you have to be careful with this, if you use it too much, all of your sounds will be completely widened out. And maintaining a good spectrum, uh, be that uh, you, you know stereo spectrum uh, from your kick and your bass, which should be monoed, to your plucks and your leads, which have a bit of width to them, to your pads, which are just absolutely wide and massive. You want to make sure you, you keep that dynamic, and we'll go over that later when we, whenever we uh, do some mastering on this. So what I did here is, uh, in this insert section, you can see an M and an S. To explain what uh, Quadrilectra Stereo Splitter does, it's a mid-side mastering tool. Uh, I'm not going to explain exactly how mid-side mastering works, because it's a very complicated process. Suffice to say, the basic of what it does is it takes your uh, mono channels and puts them into what's called mid and it takes the stereo channels your left and your right and puts them into what's called side so if we were to uh, play our pad here that's just the mono and if we turn that off this would just be the stereo sounds So what we're going to do with this, now that we've uh, done these inserts, we're going to do the mid into one EQ, and we're going to do the side into another EQ. Uh, let's solo out the mid and remove some uh, kind of sore spots in the mid, because we want to keep a decent portion of the solo channel mids open for the kick and the bass. We want to have room for that. side we're going to boost the highs and drop some of the mid as well so now whenever we put them together just have this huge massive sound uh, another nice thing is you can adjust the levels of your solo and your stereo sound so I'm gonna boost the mid just a bit actually I'm gonna take it down a bit and I'm gonna boost the stereo have a really nice huge sound. I'm going to turn the decay up on this a bit. And the release up on the filter envelope. So now we have just an absolute massive pad. So now 
Let's name our combinator. Let's get into some of the creative process. And with threes and nine, this is just absolutely easier than it's ever been before. We're just gonna right click our combinator, go to the player section and add the scales and chords. And let's change this to minor because especially with uh, just epic uplifting trance, you're gonna find that most uplifting trance and most emotional types of trance are in a minor key because it's just a more emotional key. So, um, oh heck, let's just, let's pick E, let's see what, how that sounds. We're gonna make sure chords mode is turned on up here. Uh, I'm gonna do open chords and I'm gonna add an octave down. So uh, let's just start playing. So as you can see already, just that easily, you have amazing uplifting style chords. So I'm gonna try to come up with a little progression here and then we'll see how that turns out and we'll write that down into our uh, sequencer. Okay, so I got a little bit of a chord progression uh, drawn out here. It's nothing special, but uh, using our player up here with uh, the scale of E minor, open chords, and an octave down, this is what it sounds like. to adjust the attack on this a little bit and bring it down. We have a good punchy kick and a nice, absolutely massive dreamy pad uh, on top of that. So next, we'll look into uh, getting some percussions in. So let's start with another combinator, of course. 6-2, line mixer, Kong drum designer, and just for our temporary sequencing purposes, a redrum. Or, I'm sorry, our red drum. So, let's of course route our gate outs from red drum into gate in on Kong. I like to do at least uh, four pads. So, our first one is going to be our snare. So, on every offbeat, we select one. Our second is going to be our hi hat. So, on every third, we'll do that. Um, We'll do every other one on this one for one of our closed hats. And for our second closed hat, we'll do the opposite steps. So we'll go ahead and run this. Uh, let's mute our pad. So we just have our kick. And let's start with a good clap. Once again, this the quality of your clap is gonna come down to the quality of your sample pack. So it's important you choose a good one or collect a lot of them. All right, so that's almost there, but not quite. So I'm gonna make sure I have drum one selected and up here in the pad group, I'm gonna link this to D and we're gonna create a second one. Basically, when you link it, that means anytime that this pad is triggered, this one will also be triggered if we link them together. So let's find another snare. All right, so I think this is a good snare combination. So next we're going to add our open hat. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. Next we'll start with one of our closed hats. And our second.
so we got a good bit of percussion there. Uh, I'm also going to link the hi-hat to a separate pad, and we're going to do another sampler here, and I'm going to throw in a, uh, a cymbal ride. That gives a bit more energy and velocity to our uh, overall sound. So we're going to uncheck Enable Pattern Selection. We're going to right click Copy Pattern to Track. And we're going to move this pattern up to oh, our Combinator Track. We'll rename that Percussion. And we're going to delete Red, uh, Red Drum. And I'll show you why here. We're going to come down to our mixer and we're going to select this little drop down right here and commit this to group channel A1. And if we come down here nor near our uh, quantization, hit groove, we can bring up our groove mixer. So I'm going to mute the pad. And we're going to just dig around with some presets and see what sounds good. Okay, I ended up using the swing shake preset. Uh, I put it at about 30 on the groove thing there. Uh, one other thing I noticed I forgot to do is add some filters onto our snares to cut out some of the low end. So let's just throw a couple high pass filters on those. So that gives us a bit of a, a, a swing and a groove to our percussions, which is very important because uh, trance is, of course, a, a genre of EDM, which is electronic dance music, and if you want to have music that's danceable, you need to have a bit of a swing to it. So now let's play this all together. So what I did here is I cut the width down to about halfway on the percussion and I'm going to properly mix in the percussion and the pad now so that they're at a good level. Next time, uh, we'll look at adding some bass possibly some pucks and arpeggiations, and maybe some sound effects too. Hope you learned something good, and if you have any requests for any other styles, types, anything like that, just uh, leave me a comment, send me a message, just let me know. And uh, thanks for watching.